some analysis and go to Omar Badar. Badar. He is a member of the National Policy Council at the Arab American Institute. He joins me now from Washington, D.C. Also, thanks so much for joining us here at TRT World. I mean, we've heard there uh, Yasmin saying that this hasn't been a priority really for, for Biden in his first 100 or so days in office. But can we expect a different approach from his administration? Will he uphold Trump's diplomacy for Israel? Unfortunately, I don't expect that there is going to be a significant change in the Biden administration's approach unless there is pressure on it to do so. Biden simply restored American policy pre-Trump to some extent. Policy towards Palestine and Israel has been problematic long before Trump came into office. The U.S. had always talked a good game about the importance of human rights and opposition to Israeli settlement expansion and many other things. But when it came down to action, the U.S. always insisted on making sure that Israel gets unconditional military support and unconditional diplomatic protection at the United Nations. When Trump came along, he resolved that contradiction in the wrong direction. He essentially made sure that American policy as, as a position would match the bad practices and in fact escalated the war against Palestinians by becoming a full participant in it instead of simply an enabler of Israeli policies. And Biden simply restored the hypocrisy that existed before Donald Trump. Now, on the, on the more optimistic side, there is now increasingly members of Congress who are willing to speak up in defense of Palestinian rights and who are insisting that Israel must be held accountable and talking about conditioning American military aid to Israel on Israel behaving in a way that the world expects of it and to respect Palestinian rights and, and international law. And the louder these voices become and the more courage they develop and the more members, other members of Congress join them, there is the possibility for increased pressure on the Biden administration to change its behavior accordingly as well. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. But uh, Israel's Supreme Court will hold a hearing on this long running case on Monday. But I do want to ask you, what does international law says about the evictions of this type? Yep. You're putting your finger exactly on the problem. It does not matter what the Israeli Supreme Court decides because the Israeli Supreme Court has no jurisdiction over East Jerusalem. East Jerusalem is occupied Palestinian territory that Israel has no legitimate claim to whatsoever. So the idea that the Supreme Court is weighing in on this issue is absurd to begin with. International law is absolutely clear about the fact that East Jerusalem is occupied and that Israel has no right to engage in any kind of population transfer. And what we're witnessing right now is nothing short of an act of ethnic cleansing. It really is the same process that started with the creation of Israel in terms of the Nakba that's about to be the anniversary of 70 something uh, anniversary is about to be celebrated soon. It's the same exact process of driving Palestinians out of their homes and allowing for Israelis to take over those very homes in order to expand um, the Israeli population and shrink the Palestinian population. And that is absolutely a war crime under international law. There is no dispute about it. And there's no dispute about the fact that Israeli settlements that are built throughout the Palestinian territories are war crimes as well. It's not just the United Nations and the International Court of Justice, but every every major human rights organization in the world echoes that exact same sentiment. And really, it's only the fact that nobody's willing to hold Israel accountable through actions is why these war crimes continue. Right. Yes. As you said, we heard from the United Nations. We, we heard many warnings that, uh, you know, this amounts to war crimes, but seems like nothing much has changed on the ground. Actually, we've seen uh, that violence, over 200 people injured in the last couple of days. Now, if the Supreme Court in Israel, if, if it decides, the judges, if they decide the evictions are, up, uh, are to be upheld, uh, what will this mean for all Palestinians living under Israeli occupation? I think there will be a likely escalation coming forward. I mean, there's a full understanding right now that Israel is behaving with a complete arrogance of power. There is a huge shift to the extreme right within Israeli politics where you have a situation now, just during these protests, you had the deputy mayor of Jerusalem uh, joining with a member of the Israeli parliament, the Israeli Knesset, where they were mocking protesters and saying that they wish they could kill them. I mean, this this level of extremism from Israel's public officials um, is, is really getting out of hand. So we're witnessing this massive shift in Israeli politics to the right. We have coming up in just a couple of days uh, what right-wing Israelis celebrate as Jerusalem Day, which is really a celebration of, of Israelis capturing and occupying Jerusalem. And every year we see a massive escalation of violence when right-wing uh, extremists take the streets of Jerusalem chanting death to the Arabs and assaulting random Palestinians that they see. And in light of this particular escalation, there is every reason to expect that this is going to be a particularly violent one. And so unfortunately, it looks like we're heading towards the path of escalation. 
The message to Palestinians is very clear. The Israeli government does not care about their rights, and it does not hold anything that they consider holy into account at all, as we've seen with this assault on the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Had the situation been reversed, had it been Jewish places of worship that were being assaulted by armed Palestinians and people were being brutalized, obviously the outrage would be universal and you would not have seen the statement from Washington that's really equivocating and equating oppressor and oppressed and equating aggressor and victim. We would have had much more clear-cut statements and it really is a shame that we're in a position right now where Palestinians who are being, who are victims of settler colonial expansion and apartheid, as was emphasized in a recent Human Rights Watch report, uh, are lacking that backing that they really deserve from, from Washington and from many other governments who should be weighing in much more significantly to hold Israel accountable. Right. Uh, Omar, I really appreciate your insight. Omar Badar, uh, he's the member of the National Policy Council at the Arab American Institute. Thanks so much again for joining us here at TRT World. <laughs>